Adam Brady News Source, the Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger has requested hand recounts of all votes in the 2020 Georgia election. The University Center offers pop-up saliva testing for COVID-19 free to students, faculty, and staff. Um, it takes maybe five minutes total to get the whole thing taken care of, but it's pretty quick and easy. And information about how Madison County plans to hold their annual Christmas with a cop event. Good evening, I'm Henry Fletcher and welcome to Grady News Source. We begin with developing news. A few hours ago, the Georgia Secretary of State ordered a hand recount of votes from the 2020 presidential race. Brad Raffensperger says there will be a recount of votes in all 159 counties in the state. In total, Georgia had almost 5 million votes cast in this election. Ballot recounts may be requested in states with a margin of half a percent difference between candidates. However, voting administrator expert Dr. Trey Hood says he thinks this is also a result from some pressure from Raffensperger's political party. He also explains the hand recounting process. I don't really think it's necessary, personally, to have a hand recount in this situation. It's going to entail each county going back through the paper ballots that are produced, both the absentee ballots and the ballots produced by the in-person voting the Republican Secretary of State's decision comes after lawmakers from his own party have pushed for a recount in Georgia, some even asking Raffensperger to resign. News source reporter Nathan Moore takes a look at the recent events that have led to the hand recount. It's been over a week since Georgian's final ballots were cast on November 3rd, but the debate over the validity of some of those ballots is still raging. On Monday, Republican Senators Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue, who are both preparing for their own respective runoff elections, released a statement calling for Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger to resign due to, quote, failures in the Georgia elections this year, end quote. But they did not cite any specific evidence to support those claims. Later that same day, Raffensperger responded to Loeffler and Perdue's statement, declaring that he would not be resigning, and he defended Georgia's elections process, calling it a resounding success. Then yesterday, District 9 Congressman Doug Collins sent this statement to the Secretary of State asking for a full hand recount of votes for the presidential election. Shortly after, multiple Georgia congressmen also sent a joint statement to Raffensperger asking the Secretary of State for, quote, a thorough review of the allegations brought forth by the Georgia Republican Party and the Donald Trump for President campaign. They referred directly to Collins's earlier letter, specifically asking the secretary to, quote, fully examine and grant the requests laid out in their letter addressed to you earlier today before the certification of the November 3rd general election. Now, according to an official statement made by Secretary Raffensperger today at a press conference, the state of Georgia will be undergoing a hand recount. And he said, quote, it will be a heavy lift, but we will work together with the counties to get this done in time for our state certification. Nathan Moore, Grady News Source. Even though the general election was over a week ago, there is still more voting to do. Starting as soon as Thanksgiving week and going through the first week of January, there are not one but two runoff elections that voters will cast ballots for statewide. Grady News Source reporter Alex Merritt tells us what you can do to vote if you live in Oconee County. There are runoff elections both locally and statewide. One of the two is a runoff for the positions of district attorney and public service commissioner, and the other runoff is a statewide election for both of Georgia's U.S. Senate seats. A runoff election occurs when no candidate on the ballot wins the required majority of votes. Both runoff elections will be held on January 5th. The Oconee County Board of Elections confirmed to me an update from Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger saying that all runoff elections slated for December 1st will now be moved to January 5th. This date change came along after the Secretary of State announced a by-hand recount of Georgia's votes for the presidential election. Originally, the runoff elections for district attorney and public service commissioner were slated for December 1st, but now the election for public service commissioner will be moved to January 5th. However, the election for district attorney will still be on December 1st. If you're a voter in Oconee County and you wanted to vote early for either of the runoff elections, you can do so at the Oconee County Civic Center, which is the building right behind me. If you wanted to vote early for the district attorney runoff election, you can do so from November 23rd through 25th. And if you wanted to vote early for the public service commissioner runoff election or the election for both of Georgia's open Senate seats, you can do so from December 14th through December 31st. But if you want to vote through an absentee ballot, that's also an option. To vote via absentee for the December 1st district attorney runoff, just go to the Oconee County Elections and Registration page and click on the absentee ballot application link. Just print that application, fill it out and sign it, scan it, and then email it to absentee at oconee.ga.us.
If you want to vote via absentee for the January runoff elections, you'll have to apply for a ballot from the Georgia Secretary of State's office. You can go to ballotrequest.sos.ga.gov and request a ballot there. For more information about the runoff elections, you can go to the Oconee County website. Just go to oconeecounty.com and find Elections and Registration under the Departments heading. Alex Merritt, Grady News Source. While the election date for those runoff races isn't until January, candidates now are still working for votes across the state. News Source reporter Jillian Tracy has more on how candidates in one race are working to get local votes. The Senate contest between Republican Senator David Perdue and Democrat John Ossoff is just one of several races in Georgia that are headed into a runoff. This week, Ossoff has scheduled six campaign events in cities across Georgia, including one stop here in Athens. On Friday, November 13th at 5 p.m., Ossoff will take over the 40-watt parking lot here on West Washington Street. Ossoff's campaign is requiring all event attendees to adhere to CDC guidelines by wearing a mask and social distancing. Zach Miles has been following Ossoff online, but says he still won't be attending the in-person event due to concerns over COVID-19. I just think that right now, that should not be what candidates are doing just because I don't think crowds like that are a really good idea with COVID-19 being such a, such a big, big issue in this country right now and just continuing to spread. Miles says that candidates should do more virtual events and use social media as a way to campaign. Ossoff's challenger, Republican Senator David Perdue, does not have any campaign events scheduled between now and the runoff election date on January 5th. UGA sophomore Logan Crosby says he still plans to support Purdue in the runoff, but that Purdue may need to think about changing his campaign strategy if he wants to keep his seat in the Senate. For Purdue, he's got to change, in my opinion, something at this point. He's either got to do some grassroots things or he's got to start doing rallies and trying to get people out, again, because people are like, good God, this is the fourth ballot that I'm going to cast this year. So people are starting to kind of get... Worn out. Early voting for both Senate runoff races will start in person on December 14th. Absentee ballots will begin being sent out on November 18th. To make sure that you're registered to vote in the runoffs, you can check your status at www.mvp.sos.ga.gov. For Grady News Source, I'm Jillian Tracy. After winning a close sheriff's race in Oglethorpe, Grady News Source reporter Jack Sedegan talked with newly elected Sheriff David Gabriel about his goals for this next term. Returning as Oglethorpe Sheriff for a second term, David Gabriel says officer training is one of his top priorities. Training, training, training. I mean, clearly we're, we're living in a world that's changing quickly, with police especially. Gabriel is referring to the protest against police brutality following the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. He believes training leads to retaining officers on the force, another one of his goals. The sheriff also plans to use traffic stops as a way to combat opioid use. A lot of times the way we get to the drugs is through, through traffic enforcement because if, if you're doing drugs or you're transporting drugs or you're still at the drugs, you're probably doing it in a car. In 2019, four opioid deaths took place in Oglethorpe. Two counties of similar size, Jefferson and Jeff Davis, only combined for one that same year. Reporting from Oglethorpe, Jack Sedegan. Grady News Source. UGA football will have another unexpected break on Saturday. The Southeastern Conference announcing today that the game between UGA and Missouri, which was scheduled to be a noon game on November 15th, has been postponed. This is due to a combination of positive tests, contact tracing, and subsequent quarantining of individuals within the Missouri football program, according to a press release from the SEC. What does this mean for the Dogs in their matchup against the Tigers? Grady News Source sports reporter Georgia Chambers will have more on this later. A mobile COVID-19 testing clinic will be in various Athens locations until next Thursday, November 19th. The clinic is co-sponsored by the Athens Neighborhood Health Center and Athens Area Habitat for Humanity. The clinic offers COVID tests for low-income residents who lack insurance or may otherwise be unable to access testing. Local health professionals will administer the tests and results can be expected within one to three days. The next location will be on Thursday, November 12th at Mercy Health Center on 700 Oglethorpe Avenue, Unit C7 in Athens. You can find more, lo more locations by visiting AthensHabitat.com slash assistance slash mobile clinic. The University Health Center is offering a new option when it comes to asymptomatic COVID testing in the form of pop-up saliva tests. Free to all students, faculty, and staff, this testing does not require an appointment. 
Participants are asked to bring their UGA ID and not eat, drink, smoke, or chew gum 30 minutes prior to a test. UGA senior Jenna Sabowitz took a saliva test at Tate Plaza on Tuesday and described the process as quick and easy. There were, I think, two people there before me when I got there, um, but they just scanned my UGA ID and then had me scan a little QR code that took me to an online survey so I could register. Um, and then I filled out a bunch of questions, basically like dog check, asking if I had any symptoms or anything. And then they gave us our own little tests. So um, basically it's a funnel with a little tube and you spit in it. And um, it takes maybe five minutes total to get the whole thing taken care of. Since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, we've all had to come up with ways to go digital. The Georgia Department of Transportation is no different. Grady News Source reporter Kelsey Coffey tells us how the GDOT is letting citizens provide online feedback for the first time. The Georgia Department of Transportation is asking citizens to provide online feedback on their upcoming projects. Their latest federally funded project in athens Clark County is to replace twin bridges on Athens Perimeter Highway that were built in the 1960s. And we have seen so much outreach, um, more than we would see when we would have the actual public meetings at a location near the project and in an evening you know, of the week. These bridges will be three feet higher to accommodate larger vehicles, and the roads will include outside shoulders so drivers can pull over safely. It's going to make the structure better, um, and it's also going to bring those bridges up to our current design standard to address the fact that that vertical clearance I talked about, um, trucks just can't seem to get underneath there without having a crash. Kelsey Coffey, Grady News Source. The deadline to submit a comment on www.dot.ga.gov about this project is Monday, November 16th. The Georgia Department of Transportation plans to break ground in May 2020. Coming up, the rules of the road of golf carts in Jackson County and how local communities are handling holiday traditions during the pandemic. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. I can't know. Take a look under your bed. Find <laughs> stuff under there. What about jobs? No? I wouldn't be able to read. Now try your closet. Still no jobs? Just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? I can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made this vacation happen. Double points with every purchase. Cleverly merging promotions. I love it. Cross-referencing travel sites. And booking all your flights with those... Vouchers. I got us bumped. They were like, oh. But now they're like... <laughs> Aloha. You aced this vacation. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Some Jackson County residents are learning the hard way that golf carts are not permitted on just any residential street. Grady News Source reporter Cassidy Hannon has the story. Jackson County Sheriff Janice Mangum said she was expecting some heat when she took to her Facebook page to clarify laws when it comes to the use of golf carts on public roadways after receiving one particularly concerning report of an intoxicated driver. The focus for us as law enforcement, even though it is against the law, is these underage drivers and people thinking they can drink and drive. Motorized vehicles like golf carts are only permitted on public streets or paths when there's a specific ordinance in place that allows them to do so, according to Georgia State Law in Section 40-6-331 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated. 
but not everyone agrees with those rules. Nicholson resident Jason Strickland drives his golf cart on his neighborhood roads where there is no ordinance. In a subdivision where speed limits below 35, I do agree. You should be able to drive your golf cart. A later section of the official code does state that low speed vehicles such as golf carts shall be operated only on any highway where the posted speed limit does not exceed 35 miles per hour. But according to Sheriff Mangum, this doesn't give golf cart drivers free reign on any road under 35 miles per hour. It's still illegal to drive a golf cart when there isn't a specific ordinance permitting you to do so. And Jason Strickland has seen those consequences firsthand. I'm a victim of harassment from the police department because I've been pulled over three times in one week just on my golf cart. Sheriff Mangum said this isn't how law enforcement wants to be spending their time, but when they hear about reckless behavior, they have to do something about it. Cassidy Hannon, Grady News Source. Jackson County announced the cancellation of their annual Christmas parade this year due to safety and health concerns surrounding COVID-19. The county decided with this being such a large public event, it would be irresponsible to host. This caused some backlash on social media and county residents seemed to be upset. A number of comments have suggested that the cancellation is due to budget cuts more than COVID-19 guidelines. Currently, there are no plans to resume the Christmas parade, but there is an alternative event called PJs and Pictures with Santa at Gillilich Christmas Church on Saturday, December 5th. The church is encouraging all residents to attend. As we've seen throughout 2020, COVID-19 has made event planning even more complicated with the addition of new safety precautions. Grady News Source reporter Maddie McQueen tells us how Madison County's annual Christmas with a cop event will look different this year than years past. I'm just glad that we're getting the habit because I honestly did not think we were going to get in the habit. I, I just assumed that like so much other stuff, it'd probably be canceled. After much deliberation and careful planning, the Madison County Sheriff's Department says they found a safe way to host the fourth annual Christmas with a Cop event following CDC guidelines. This event was started by Sheriff Michael Moore as a way to provide gifts to kids in need during the holidays. We have cut the number of children down and it'll be about a 10 this year, about half as normal. As usual. All kids and officers involved in this event will be given a wellness check upon arrival and will be required to wear a mask and socially distance. I, I know the kids are getting to ride in our patrol cars, so they're going to do a lot of disinfecting of the patrol cars, um, you know, before and after and even during the, the ride. The kids are chosen by their school counselor and sent home with an application to be filled out and submitted by their guardian. Tracy Hevington, school counselor at Comer Elementary, says she uses her knowledge of what the kids have going on at home to nominate the three most deserving for this event, and that the coronavirus created a bigger need this year. Some kids, you know, maybe they lost a parent or, you know, something, they've got some tragedy that has happened or trauma, and um, maybe this is something that could brighten their spirits or, or lift them up. Hevington says every year the kids are excited to go and the parents have nothing but good things to say afterwards. It's pretty cool to see that they want to buy stuff for mom and dad and grandma, grandpa, brothers, sisters. So we have to remind them to buy things for themselves. Like this house. To make sure each child gets what they need is around $250. This money is raised through donations, which is being accepted now through December 11th. Money donations can be dropped off in person or mailed to the Madison County Sheriff's Department. From Madison County, I'm Maddie McQueen, Grady News Source. Hello, this is Chelsea Perry, and coming up, I'll have your Northeast Georgia forecast, along with why we will be experiencing warmer weather this November. Hi, I'm Peter, and there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with friends. Come on in! Help yourself to anything. That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by a tennis ball. My ex-owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Attention travelers, 
Next Tuesday, a major power outage will cause complete chaos throughout the city. Food, water, and phone service will be in short supply. There will likely be panic citywide. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. The disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. And now, the weather. Hello everyone, my name is Chelsea Perry and I'm here with your Northeast Georgia forecast. As you can see overnight, we are going to be having temperatures ranging from the low 50s to the high 60s. We're going to have a low of 66 degrees and a patchy fog tonight. There will be an 80% chance of showers and a possibility of a thunderstorm. At 9 a.m., we will have a high of 70 degrees. At noon, we will have a high of 75 degrees. And at 3 p.m., we are going to have a high of 78 degrees. For tomorrow, we are going to be seeing warmer weather, ranging from the low to mid-70s. Tomorrow, we are going to be having a high of 79 degrees. It's going to be partly sunny with a 50% chance for showers. Here's our five-day forecast. On Wednesday, we are having a high of 85 degrees and a low of 76 degrees. On Thursday, we are having a high of 79 degrees and a low of 59 degrees. Friday, we are having a high of 76 degrees and a low of 52 degrees. Saturday, we are having a high of 66 degrees and a low of 52 degrees. And Sunday, we are having a high of 71 degrees and a low of 53 degrees. Thank you, everybody. This has been your weather. Chelsea Perry, Grady News Source. Checking your fantasy loop? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm, nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a uh, Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. Okay, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. Okay. But remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. And now, sports. Former Georgia offensive line coach Sam Pittman is the most recent coach in the SEC to test positive for COVID-19. This is his first year as head coach for Arkansas. Pittman had tweeted on Monday, can't explain how much the well wishes from great friends and folks of Arkansas means, Arkansas means to me. I feel fine, hoping for a false positive test. However, he was not as lucky as Alabama head coach Nick Saban. On Tuesday, the Razorbacks released a statement confirming his positive result from Sunday. Due to the confirmation, confirmed positive test, Pittman will not be allowed to coach the Razorbacks against the Gators this upcoming Saturday. He will continue to meet with the team virtually. Even though the Georgia's football program has not been heavily impacted as of yet by a surge of positive COVID-19 cases, two other programs at the university have. Both the men's tennis team and the women's soccer team have seen cancellations so far this 2020 season. Coming up, how UGA cancels spring break due to COVID-19 concerns. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? 
because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Uh, 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 uh. Um, so how does a tissue dance? Put a little buggy on it. <laughs> Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How do you not love him? With the spring semester just two months away, UGA has decided to cancel spring break. The university made the change to promote the health and safety of the University of Georgia and local communities during the pandemic after consulting with the university's medical oversight task force and other academic committees. The break, which was scheduled for March 8th through 12th, will now be replaced by three instructional or break days spread out throughout the semester. Classes will also begin two days later than previously scheduled. Many other universities, like Georgia Tech, have also been canceling their spring breaks to minimize the health risks to their communities due to travel-related transmission of the coronavirus. Dr. John Maris, a member of the University Council Committee, one of the organizations that advised the university towards the decision, says adding instructional days throughout the semester will create longer weekends rather than a week of vacation, which would decrease the chances that students travel. The feeling was is that um, having a large number of people leave campus and then come back a week later was, um, you know, synchronously, like everybody leaving and coming back was um, considered too great a risk for, you know, potentially creating a, like another flare up of, of cases in the community. The Student Government Association also weighed in on the decision on the behalf of the student body. However, not all students agree. Second year student Allison Carter feels that still having home football games is counterproductive to these precautions. They're letting 20,000 people into the stadium and they're not wearing masks or social distancing. So I don't understand how that one's working out in their minds. Um, and I just think it's gonna really hurt people because we all need a break at some point. I, I can't do a semester without a little break. For more information on the updated calendar, visit reg.uga.edu. Daniel Harvey, Grady News Source. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Henry Fletcher for Grady News Source. Have a good night. is solely responsible for its contents. Views expressed do not represent those of the administration nor the Board of Regents at the University System of Georgia. What to expect when you're expecting? Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to team-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. I'm ready for them, Mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know at all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> Did you hear about the pony with a sore throat? 
He was a little horse. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why couldn't the pelican? Wait. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because a pair of cats dribbling all over it. Where did cats go on vacation? New York. <laughs> Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires.